Hey guys, it's Boy here, and these are the things that I learned with DC Resolutions Morphling. The first thing I want to talk about is something Resolution does right at the start of the game that you almost never see a carry doing. You can see that Avenge went in before the morph to tank the ranged creep. So they were in a pretty good situation, and usually, as a carry player, you want to keep the lane as far back as possible from the enemy tower. So killing the ranged creep right away is definitely not the best way to do that. And you can see by the way he's less hitting that his intentions here are not to maintain creep equilibrium by the start. And in my opinion, this is because Morph usually gets the Morph ability at level 1, which means that he doesn't have his escape. And against a Chen and a Sand King, since he is in a tri lane, he definitely, he definitely doesn't want to be level 1 for too long. By clearing the wave early, he can get waveform and there is basically no way he dies here unless he misplays. And since he wants to level 2 very fast, the Venge can pull without hindering the Morph's farm, since the lane is very pushed now. And check this out, a Chen creep already reached the lane, and if he was just farming very slow, he could get ganked. And in the end, the attack speed error from the creep, combined with the Caustic finale, ends up hindering the Sys plan, and the lane pushes too fast, making the Morph less hit under the tower. But it's not that big of a deal, since he has decent base damage with Morphed agility. Ain't easy, yeah. Of course. Of course. Well, he is doing a pretty offensive jungle approach right now with his uh, tomato friend here. Yes. He's gonna go in misery right now. He's doing a lot of that. They try to be aggressive on the Sand King, and again we see why it made sense to be afraid of the early Chan rotations. As soon as they go aggressive on him, the Chan shows up and the Morph dies. You may think that if he had waveform level 2 they would be able to kill the Sand King, and that might be true, but getting early points in Morph, it's very important for the hero, since in the early levels you stay with very low HP to be able to last hit reliably, and you definitely want to wait to morph your strength really fast or else you're just too weak in lane and susceptible to ganks. Since Morphling has a very low attack range, he usually takes more damage from creeps in comparison to other ranged heroes, and that combined with the fact that he's against the Sand King makes it okay to go the Ring of Health even though he's not rushing the Lincolns before treads. But usually I think going treads first is better. And in this clip, check what I said about Morph. He goes for the third point at level 5, which is the norm, but a lot of inexperienced Morph players go for more points in waveform. And what you have to understand is that the waveform at level 3 doesn't add any value in comparison to level 2 waveform, while the morph from level 2 to level 3 is very strong. And usually more points in morph actually help playing aggressively, since you can be deceptively tanky in early dives and fights with it. ...PPs to do so, sure. and bottom, the bottom. dive is not coming in, curse, resolution. The stop there to try to create some space for him and it looks like he'll be fine. Yeah, the pressure is on by secret. The creeps are just hunting him though. Being bullied a lot right Dyer's now. Ouch. Ouch. Oh attack. my god. Another thing Morph players sometimes do wrong is to get the replicate at level 6. Morphling already struggles to use waveform early on, and the combined effect of using the ult and morph to replicate is 170 mana, which is too prohibitive at level 6. And check this clip. They kill the Elder Titan and they try to dive the Morphling as well. Check his decision making. He's very calm. If he morphs everything to strand right away, not only his damage will be too low, but he might not have enough mana to waveform away. So he does it slowly. Another surprise approach, but Puppy this time proves successful. Yeah, play around the sanking in the early game is such a good game plan. He deals tons of damage, and these creeps are just great for fighting. And top lane, 10 seconds of kill. RTZ has this chrono again. He won't be able to kill a first only 100 extra HP. And he keeps attacking the Sand King, and check how the waveform level 3 is way more effective than the ult. As he is right now, he wouldn't even have the mana to use it. But the extra damage combined with Resolution's Calm play gives them the kill. Usually players get the ult at level 9, after maxing both waveform and morph. The only exception is when you just win a team fight and you're just too low HP, so what you can do is make an ally replicate, TP to the base and go back, kinda like an Amber will do. And notice that he even less hit the creeps to maximize his farm. Also, check what he does here. A lot of morph players like to morph to agility as soon as they go back to the base, but the fountain region is wonky when you're morphing with a lot of HP missing. And what you usually want to do is wait for you to heal all of your HP and then morph for the stats you want. Since Secret knew that Resolution had to TP back and come back with his replicate, they go really hard on Weeha in the mid lane, and there's not much Rezo can do to help. Here, it's just a wealth of damage and they're gonna have to let their DK go. Arrow 
In some of my videos, I talked about how Drow was one of the only ranged heroes that would like to go Quelling Blade, since she has tons of base agility with her ult. And Morphling is a similar case actually, since he has way more base damage than bonus damage and he can morph how much agility he has. And you can see how Resolution farms a lot of gold in one minute, with a hero that is not usually remembered by being a fast farmer. He resets the creep equilibrium, farms every lane creep and the light camp stack without using any mana and losing any HP. Being caught too far forward, DC will just have to take that one on the chin Radiant and just... In this crazy fight, we see Resolution prowess with the hero being shown again. Arteezy dives the tower, but all the DC heroes split. And after getting chronoed, he decides to focus the Witch Doctor. But the Mirana ult is very annoying to deal with, and now check his decision making. He only morphs to strength when he takes damage instance, and he always morphs very slowly, like 200 HP. See how he waits for the cooldown on waveform until he rejoins the fight? And after the other titan stomp, he goes on the easier target to take down a chance since he noticed that the witch doctor has raindrops. In the end, even though a lot of DC members died, he managed to be a part of a kill and stay alive. Learning to play Morphing is a lot like Storm Spirit, you definitely need to play a good amount of games to get a feel of the hero and calibrate your knowledge of it. For instance, in this clip he gets arrowed by the Mirana and he doesn't even bother Morphling into strength, since he knows he can survive it. A little bit after, he makes a vengeful replicate, farms the lane, TPs right as the timer is ending, regents, and during that time he sends the venge to another lane to increase his farm even more. I to try to, I imagine, splurge into the Yag soon enough. Yeah, I don't think there's any secret uh, to what he's going for. I guess he has to infuse Raindrop, he doesn't want to sell it before it's been used. So he's just holding that until he buys the point booster. Uh, I... Beautiful display of coordination and farm patterns. We see him doing it again here. As he's pushing the top lane and knows there's a risk of a Sand King gank, he sends the Vengeful Replicate to the mid lane. He forces the Sand King to show up and then goes back to the mid lane. Oh, oh not quite. Time walk away before the stun can come through for misery. Need more levels. And even with a very good arrow from the Mirana, he's in no risk of dying. One of the strengths of Morphling is that he readily will be killed in the mid game by one or even two man ganks, unless he overextended first. And now, with his Lincolns, he can start fighting more aggressively. The Sand King doesn't know he has Lincolns, and because of that, it allows the Sea to turn that initiation on them. Steve recognizes now that Resolution has Lincolns, take that note, but we looking to make him pay for that mistake, and can he do it? Yes, he can. Uh -huh. And now check this, with the replicate he created from the Murana, he can go back top to farm. While he keeps the replicate around the mid lane, which guarantees him a lot of farm top and another kill in the mid lane after another clash breaks out. Okay, this animal connects, but yeah, puppy already ready to set help. Gets up an arrow first and a star floor. Unfortunately, he is still low level, and the prohibitive mana cost of everything ends up adding up with the refusal from the face of the void, and he ends up dying. But considering how difficult this game is, I don't blame him on going for this place, or else they will just slowly get out farmed and stuck in their base. Here we can see another trick that showcases Morphling versatility. Usually a good way of smoking is to leave someone showing in the lane, so by using the replicate, he can keep farming and at the same time help his team. Bird flying to help with the vision. Victory's gotta go now. Puppies, they saw it. gets hit. They know they the it. They're making the move and the roar's there for move. Hey guys, this is it for today. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this replay breakdown, check the link in the description. This video wouldn't ever be possible without the huge help from the Pugna guys, so show them some love. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe to it. I'm making videos like this every day and I'm sure something here will spark your interest. And if you really like my channel, please check my Patreon rewards and see if any of them are of your liking. Bye.